In this video, we will examine some YouTubers speaking Japanese and analyze their intonation contours to figure out what to do and what not to do when speaking Japanese. Here's how I selected the YouTubers for this video. At the end of part 1, I asked my viewers to suggest some YouTubers who speak Japanese in their videos. I went to their channels and chose random videos. I also did a search on YouTube using the search term speaking Japanese and added some videos to my list. From each of these videos, I extracted the first 20 seconds or so of them speaking in Japanese. Please note that I either do not watch them at all or watch them regularly so there is no reason for me to hate on them. Also, you will only see screenshots of their videos. The links to all the videos will be in the description below, so go support them. Moreover, keep in mind that my comments will pertain solely to the intonation contours and therefore I will not delve into any phonetic, lexical or syntactic details. Let's start with the least proficient speakers. First up, we have Jenna Marbles. I found a video of her speaking Japanese in a video titled Learning Japanese. She is a complete beginner as she doesn't study Japanese. In this video, in preparation for her trip to Japan, she tries to learn Japanese. Have a listen and pay attention to her intonation. Roboto restaurant ni shotoku suru koto toko de baga imas. De fukuri tu susamam sa. Ona no ko wa anata no Instagram no manis. Nishimasuke konu shimasuka doko anata no te o hotu hoti suru tame ni zanen. Shot shite kureskai. In the first bit of the sample audio, she is reading the romanized translation of the English sentence How can I get to the robot restaurant? Besides the fact that the translation is widely inaccurate, you should notice that she has a very distinct intonation pattern where she starts off low, goes up, and maintains the same high pitch until the end of each phrase. Have another listen and pay attention to the low, high, high pattern and try to imitate her intonation. Roboto restaurant ni shotoku suru koto. Roboto restaurant ni shotoku suru koto. So, how would I say it? Roboto restaurant ni shutoku suru koto. There is a slight peak in the intonation contour at botto in robotto, but your intonation should be otherwise as flat as possible. Next up, we have Reese in her video titled Speaking in Japanese with Q&A. I am not familiar with her content, but judging by her speech, I would guess that she is either a beginner or an intermediate learner of Japanese. Firstly, have a listen to her and try to figure out her intonation pattern. Konnichiwa minasan, Reese desu. Ima watashi wa 27 sai desu. Demo a tanjoubi ni 10月16 nichi desu. 28 sai ni narimasu. So, pati wo shimashou ka? Watashi wa kami ga nagakute chotto sai ga hikui desu. So shite omoshirokute tanoshikute atama ga ii to omoimasu. As you may have noticed, her intonation contour is not as extreme as Jenna's, but it is still more dynamic than that of a native speaker. Her intonation when she says konnichiwa is very typical of a beginner as she accentuates the third mora or ni in konnichiwa. 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 Also, Jenna and Reese both have a tendency to start off low and then go high. For instance, she raises the pitch at desu at the end of the second sentence. Reese desu in, Reese desu in. And she also puts stress on ma in ima, ima, ima. on shiwa in watashiwa. And on ju in niju. How would I say it? Konnichiwa minasan, Reese desu. Ima watashi wa 27 sai desu. Next we have Paul from Lang Focus in a video titled How similar are Chinese and Japanese? Given that he relies on a synthetic Chinese voice to pronounce his Chinese examples for him, whereas he reads his Japanese examples himself, we can assume that he is more proficient in Japanese than in Chinese. Now, have a listen and try to figure out his intonation pattern. Similarly to Reese, Paul also has a rising intonation in 私は。私は。
私は The word 学校 is also stressed on the first mora in its first occurrence. 学校へ行く学校へ行く Even though his second utterance of 学校 sounds more native like 学校へ行く学校へ行く Moreover, 行った is also stressed on the first mora. 行った行った How would I say it? 私は学校へ行く私は学校へ行った Next, we have Rachel from the channel Rachel and Jun. She has a Japanese husband and lives in Japan. The video I picked is quite old, so it's possible that her Japanese may have improved since its release. Now, have a listen. こんにちは。はじめまして。私はレイチルと言います。日本人の登録者の方から日本語でビデオを作ってほしいと要望があったので、今回は日本語で自己紹介のビデオを作ろうと思います。私は大学でアジア研究を専攻しました。2年前に日本に留学し、そこで夫の住民地に出会いました。Her intonation contour is overall flatter than those of the previous YouTubers, but she still has some minor issues that make her sound not quite native like. First, in the word 自己紹介 she places the stress on the second mora, ko. She also has a high low intonation in the word kata. How would I say it? 日本人の登録者の方から日本語でビデオを作ってほしいと要望があったので今回は日本語で自己紹介のビデオを作ろうと思います The next couple of speakers have very few issues relating to intonation First, we have Loretta from her channel ケムシちゃんロレッタ in a video titled Why I can't read kanji Have a listen 最初はやっぱ大変だったよね大学時代と比べてまあこれしかないからもうひどい性格はいに来たのに何人いるのってどうやったらしくないわなんかそういうのじゃなくてなんかこう何年ぶりにやってないのに連絡せずにいきなりやられて、まあ、びっくりしたよだってクリスマスだしどうやったもさ日本での初クリスマスっていう感じでしょ She sounded very native like until the last part where she says びっくりしたよ In びっくりした she has a rising intonation which peaks at the end of びっくりびっくりしたよびっくりしたよ。In クリスマスだし、she once again has a rising intonation。クリスマスだし、クリスマスだし。How would I say it? びっくりしたよ。だってクリスマスだし、ロレッタもさ、日本での初クリスマスって感じでしょ。Next we have Chris from abroad in Japan. He's been in Japan for several years, so his Japanese sounds quite native-like, except for when he utters a few specific words and phrases. Have a listen first and try to figure out which words and phrases sound slightly odd. 英語と日本語はものすごく違うからあのペレペレに日本語を喋られたとしても言いたいことをちゃんと伝えられない気がするコーヒーを飲んだら日本語が出てくるこのビデオの字幕を書くことに長い時間がかかると思う道の駅に泊まって広がるの食べてこれは牛丼プレゼントおお何これ<笑>コーラマジでコカ・コーラコーヒーやばい全然美味しくない、まず The words and phrases that sound non-native like to me are コーヒー日本語 and このビデオの字幕を As for the word コーヒー he says it with the same placement of stress as the English word coffee コーヒーを飲んだらコーヒーを飲んだら which is a common phenomenon when non-native speakers use loan words that Japanese borrowed from other languages This also happens to me when I am speaking English and have to use loan words from Japanese such as tsunami In the word 日本語 he stresses the second mora, ho. And in 字幕 the first mora is emphasized. 字幕字幕 How would I say it? コーヒーを飲んだら日本語が出てくるこのビデオの字幕を書くことに長い時間がかかると思う。Next up, we have you or DS. I don't know how to say her name, so I am sorry if I mispronounced it. Now have a listen to her first. では皆さん、こんにちは、ユオです。みんな多分知ってると思うけど、えっ、ー、とね、今の私は日本語は全然大丈夫だけど、最初はなんかさ、日本初めて来たの時は、去年かなそう、去年だ。なんかさ、やばいよ。何にも喋れないし、何にも置かないし、もうやばいよ、本当に。My honest opinion is that there is not much to comment with regard to her intonation, although she does have some issues with other aspects of the language. So, what does she do right? You can see that there are no extreme ups and downs, and towards the end of each phrase, the intonation contour gradually falls. Also, the intonation contour is not so flat as to sound robotic. 
Next, we have an even more proficient speaker, Dogen, in his video titled A Message to Logan Paul. Logan Paul, eh? Nihon tanoshindeiru kana? Mada kochi de doga o sakusei shiteru kamo shire nai to omotte, doga teian o ikutsu ka tsukutte mita. Moshi yokatta ra sankou ni shite ne. Soukou chuu no kuruma kara johan shin o tsukidashi, ooku no hito ni meiwaku kakeru zo, to sakeen dara dou da. Ah, gomen, sore mou yatta ndeu ne. Ii no atta. Out of all the YouTubers we've looked at so far, he sounds by far the most native-like. So just like the previous speaker, I don't have anything negative to say. What does he do right? Similarly to the previous YouTuber, his overall intonation contour is not too flat. It rises slightly at the beginning and gradually falls towards the end of each clause. He is also nailing the pitch accent of each individual word. Finally, I also examined a few non-monolingual native speakers of Japanese, but I don't really have anything new to say about their intonation contours. After all, they are native speakers. However, I will let you listen to them, and then I will try to make a few comments. The first native speaker I looked at is Raina Scully, who I believe is an American Japanese YouTuber. She mentions in another video of hers that she can't read many kanji characters, but her intonation sounds impeccable to me, at least in the video that I examined. Have a listen. One thing I'd like to note is that she sounds excited in this video, which makes her intonation contour more dynamic than normal. However, the same pattern that we observed above still holds. That is, there is usually a slight rise at the beginning, and then the intonation gradually falls towards the end of each clause or phrase. Our next native speaker is Joey the Anime Man. He is an Australian Japanese YouTuber. I believe his mother is Japanese, and to my knowledge, he currently resides in Japan. Now, listen to him. He sounds like a normal native speaker to me, so his intonation contour starts high and falls towards the end. In this particular segment of his video, he puts emphasis on a few words that occur at the beginning of sentences. For example, 今日はちょっと全部. These words are spoken in discrete chunks and produced with greater intensity, meaning they sound louder. 今日はちょっと全部. 今日はちょっと全部. The final speaker for this video is Duncan from his channel, PDR さん. Listen to him first. Once again, he sounds like a normal native speaker to me, but if I had to make one comment, I'd have to mention that in this video, he is playing the role of a convenience store cashier, and many people working in the service industry, particularly part-time workers, are said to have a distinct manner of speech, often dubbed baitokeigo. Duncan accurately captures and imitates their speech patterns, which relate mostly to their peculiar uses of keigo, exemplified by the phrase ni narimasu, which has become increasingly widespread. In terms of intonation, Duncan often raises the pitch at the end of a phrase or a sentence when talking directly to the customer. While in contrast, he has a normal falling intonation when he is playing the role of a customer. Or when he is having an internal monologue. So this is the end of this video. It took me a long time to start working on this video because I was trying to figure out how to verbally express why certain learners sound non-native-like, while some others sound like native speakers. In your native language, I am sure you can tell immediately when someone is a non-native speaker, but it's often difficult to identify the cause of this intuitive feeling. Hopefully, my descriptions made sense to you and that you learned something useful from this video.